Wellness Show, episode number 364. Welcome to the Wellness Show, a podcast on health and wealth. I'm your host, Tyson Bannigan, the founder of the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy. Join me as we get the latest insight, tips, and strategies from wellness providers, coaches, and successful heart-centered entrepreneurs, and much, much more. There we are. We're live on Facebook. This is Tyson Bannigan, and this is Fear Suffocates While Love Liberates, okay? So are you ready? I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Fear Suffocates While Love Liberates. So there you are. There's the topic today. Thank you, Sarah, for showing up. And this is from the book On Fire. So so Sarah, John O'Leary, he had what? 80%, 90%, 100% burn burn on his body, 100% burn on his body at the age of nine, and has written this book about how to handle that situation, right, and come from your heart. Is that right, sir? And all these people that said something that triggered his uh, belief that it's okay, and he can survive, and I don't want to die, and, and, you know, including his parents, and his favorite um, football team leaders came and supported him. And it's a wonderful book, just a wonderful book. And his parents made a movie about the experience because the kid lit the fire by mistake. Oh. And the whole house went up. So he was terrified his dad was going to kill him. Wow. And then his dad came and said, I love you, when he saw him, what a state he was in in the hospital. Oh, my God. Yeah, what a journey. So if anybody out there thinks you're having a rough day of it, well, maybe tune into this kid and what he's been through. And if yeah. he can get out of fear and shame and anger and and and, and absolute, you know, feeling so guilty that he caused the fire that uh, and get into his heart, then anybody can do it, right? I love examples like that. Yes. So thank you, Sarah. You just handed me this piece of paper and here we are. Want to so, read it again? Because... We, when you read it, we had like one person on, and now we have a, we have. Six. All right. So the the theme <clears throat> for this morning is out of fear and into your heart. And Sarah came in. She just finished reading the book, The Seven Choices to Ignite a Radically Inspired Life. It's called On Fire by John O'Leary, who, at the age of nine, if I've got the story right, uh, had a ninety percent burn to his body. 100. 100% because he lit the house on fire and it burnt to the ground. Anyway, he um, it, this is his experience about coming back and um, reclaiming his life and going from fear and shame to being in his heart. And so he's got seven choices. And the, and the sixth choice is, where is it here? Uh, number seven, it says, the title is, Are You Ready? This is uh, the seventh choice. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Fear suffocates while love liberates. Yes. And then I like what he says, awakening is, don't confuse being out of bed with being fully awake. <laughs> don't confuse being out of be- bed as with being fully awake. <laughs> All right, so this is a fully awake show. Wide eyed. <laughs> Wide eyed, right? So here you are. Phone in 1 866 369 7464. Come and join us. Get your questions answered about dowsing and energy healing. Ask us tough questions. Uh, let us know what's up in your life and uh, how are you dealing with all the major planetary changes and transformation that we're in the midst of with COVID 19. All right. So uh, how's life in your world there, Laura? It's wonderful. Went for a walk last night and we got so close to birds. Birds are just allowing us to come up so close to them and they're not flying away. So I just open up that heart. No living in fear, only love and nature will show you um, by being not afraid of you. Yeah. I had a nice experience. I was up at my my neighbor's. Uh, his name is James. He down here helping us. He's an amazing guy, and he was showing his new kingdom that he's building there. 
And um, he said, oh, the deer will be coming down the mountain any moment now. And we're out in the back and there they are coming down the mountain. They must have been no less than 10 feet away. Not one. Oh, here's a human being. Ain't that interesting? Let me continue to nibble here and nibble there. But it's so beautiful to see the deer just uh, mm-hmm. feeling that safe, right? Yep. Mind you, we, he had to build a fence to protect his garden and all the rest of it because they'll eat everything. Right. I mean, they're, they're convinced that humans grow gardens for deer <laughs> to eat, right? <laughs> well, they're not. I mean, they don't see boundaries at all. Oh, no. I mean, uh, it must be that that must be those tasty vegetables must have been for me. And that fence must be something for me to just go through. Don't fence me in. I think no. there's a song called that. Why are you fencing in all that good food? Yeah. It needs to be out here. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Eduardo, Eliza, and Karen for showing up. It's your time to ask questions, right? So we don't have to keep talking to each other. I mean, it's fine to talk to each other, but you know. I want to kind of bring I want to kind of bring something up because I'd like to get your take on it. I have a friend who's she's the nicest person. She's so sweet and everyone loves her. And I love her. I think she's an amazing person. She's so afraid of getting her mom sick and getting in because her mom has it's coming overcoming something. And and I was having a conversation with her and saying, listen, I don't live in fear. I live in love. And trying to explain to her how I feel about not wearing masks and not living in fear and and um, just going out and living and loving. And, she, and she's like terrified of bringing back something and her mother dying. And I'm like, that's not love. And she says, that is love. And it's like, I, I, I don't want to change your mind. I just want to understand how people can associate love with fear, how they associate it together. Because it's such a different, it's so vibratorily different, you know? Yeah. Well, and it's also judgment. So, Laura, if you really understood where I'm coming from, that my fear is because I'm trying to, I love my mom so much that I need to protect her, therefore I'm in this fear. Uh, It's really unfortunate because we get that all mixed up, that that is actually the problem, you know, if the strongest energy or the strongest thought you have in your head at any one time, particularly if you're persistent with that thought, you manifest it into reality. So if you want to have your mom sick with COVID-19, keep focusing on it because it's a done deal. Now, I know that sounds horrible and terrible and Tyson, how could you dare say that? But my God, it's true. It is true. If you want something to happen, just focus on it. The universe doesn't care what you're focusing on. It says, oh, you want this because you're focused it. Let's deliver it. That's what's so amazing. We are the most incredible manifestors you could ever imagine. It's just <laughs> that we have no control over what we manifest into reality. I mean, if we're not aware of it. Well, even if you're aware of I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to have every thought in my head manifest in 30 seconds in front of me. It'd be a scary world to live in, right? I can't. I do, manif- manif- I do manifest quite quite well though yeah, but i don't i don't i i love you laura but i wouldn't want to see every thought in your head manifest into reality no thank you no thank you right no thank you that is so true it's, yeah right <laughs> we got messy heads right let's face it it's so true that's a yeah. lot of compost in there it needs to compost <laughs> you just called my head compost oh, that's right God. the big compost pile so yeah, so it grows great vegetables and we love yeah. the fact that it can create and manifest crazy, wonderful things. But we don't want every thought word indeed manifested mm-hmm. instantaneous. I mean, this is what we're going to as time collapses and there's no past and present. It, can you realize what that means? That means when you think a thought, it's created. So you better get your, your head on and you better get your mind cleared up. Yes. No more monkey mind because you're going to manifest all that crap everywhere and it's going to be poo, 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 poo everywhere. It's going to be really yucky, mis- messy. You don't want that. You really don't want that. Kind of Remember, is. there's this guy named Kenneth and he was working on creating a pyramid because they were told to, you know, by 
um, upstairs, let's just say upstairs, to build a pyramid to do some work in anchoring the light on the planet. And so they built the pyramid. And, um, and the whole book is called Standing Columnar Waves. Sarah wrote a book report on a very powerful book. And the lady is absolutely amazing. She, she teaches a whole uh, clearing modality, which by the way, remind me, Lauren, we'll do it in the dowsing and energy healing uh, group, you know, in the, in the master group. Very powerful healing technique. Anyway, so they build this uh, pyramid which allows them to sort of like have a hotline to upstairs to the, to the aliens that were part of this uh, intention to create this pyramid. And he said, I would really like to experience, I'd really like to be able to uh, read people's minds. And so they gave him that ability. Within 24 hours, he's back in the pyramid and said, please, please, please take it away, <laughs> take it away, take it away, which is My the mom. same thing. We're not ready to read right. each other's minds. We don't want to know all that stuff, right? Right. Yesterday I posted this, what looked like um, clouds that look like stairway to heaven. Yeah. And my mom quickly posts, oh, that looks like a park bench. And I said, oh, mom, that's exactly, that's exactly it. You're not ready to go up the stairway to heaven. You're just going to park it for a while. I love it. I was like, yes, see, that's my mom. That's how I get my thinking. I'm not going up no stairway. I'm just going to park it for a while. <laughs> well, as long as the view's good on the bench, I don't, I know, that's a great idea. I mean, uh, my mom has a great sense of humor. Love that woman. And my yeah, grandmother, she gets it. the stairway, there's quite a bit of effort on that, right? You know, yeah. You know, you're going to have to deal with each step at a time, right? Yeah. You get your old heart rate, rate going there, right? But going back to this whole thing about fear, and there was a, a nurse that was on this morning when uh, people send me the, thank you everybody out there for sending me all this, uh, these videos. One of the videos was a nurse who was out in her backyard talking about why not to wear a mask, what happens? She says, when people come and you're having respiratory problems because you're stressed out, because you're in fear, fear, what we're talking about, your heartbeat is pounding, right? And you are hyperventilating. So they give you a bag, right? brown paper bag to breathe in so it can balance the CO2 oxygen and take you from acid, whatever, acid state of being inside and calm you down, right? It balances out the oxygen and carbon dioxide balance. She said, when you wear a mask, you are now causing that acid state in your body. You're breathing in your own viruses in your body and you're not getting fresh air. So you are in the process of putting yourself under stress. And she said, furthermore, you're always trying to adjust the mask. So you got your face, you know, you're touching your face and the only way the viruses can get in is by you touching your face and they get in through, you know, your orifices. So when you're doing that, you're gonna increase the ability to be infected. So she said, don't do that, you know, just it doesn't make any sense to do that so i mean it i'm not telling you what to do or not to do what you choose to do is up to you and if you want mm -hmm. to live in fear live in fear but i love it when people that like her who are nurses hey let's get your head on right let's think about this for a moment here right well let, let me just give you some medical advice yeah. here about what makes sense right Yes, but this is the thing, though, is that if you have all of these other people wearing the mask and this herd mentality of, oh, no, so many people are saying to wear it. When you bring one person in that contradicts that, all they do is just smush them down. That's well, why you and I. That's the story of our life, people, Laura. Right. That's why you and I are trying to teach people to think for themselves. If you're a sovereign human being, whatever people tell you is entirely up to them. It's not your business, right? However, I did see a video, which was really another video, which was really, really powerful. And mm -hmm. he, this guy is standing out there and his buddy's coming along and he's running like this. And he stops and says, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. And what's happening in your life? And blah, blah, blah. And they have, a, they have a, a hug. And then this guy comes around the corner and we have a, we have a connection here. Their people are touching, they're hugging here. And, and they're taking pictures and the helicopters start coming over and these guys are running like crazy, right? And they're being hunted down by the police and, you know, me, 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 because they hugged. 
I mean, this is the craziness that we could get. I mean, this is taking it to. Oh, it's already right? happening though that people are turning in other people for yeah. things that they're that they're afraid of. Yeah. So get out of fear. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And into the, your heart. And into your heart. Let's let's, let's let's read what our chat because we have we have some questions here. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So there. I'm sorry. I said I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So there. Oh, I love you too. Yeah, and that's just the way it should be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I love everyone on the on the show, and on um, people who think like me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Well, the thing about what I, what I love about people is I see their true nature and I hold them accountable to that no matter what they're doing. So they could be really, really, like I have a friend who's in and out of jail all the time, but I just love him because I see his soul essence and it's so beautiful and it's so shiny and bright that when I hold him in that essence of who he truly is, he will rise to that over time, even if he goes to jail and in and out of jail. I just love them at the soul level. Mm -hmm. But to me, that is really what, when I say, when I, when he says, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. I love somebody at the soul essence. It doesn't matter how bad and wrong right. they are. I'm going to love them anyway, because I've made okay. that commitment. There's something about that person at the soul level that I understand. And yes, mm -hmm. our human journey can be really quite difficult, you know, full of all sorts of pitfalls and you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I tell you, if you made that connection with you, if I can see your higher self and I know where you're supposed to be going when you get out of your own way and I love you, there's nothing you can do about it. I don't, you could be just bad, rotten and wrong and I'm still going to love you. So there yeah. you are. When people get real angry, I just say, I'm just going to love you because that's all I can do. That's all, that's all, that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to love you. And you need more love than most people don't, people don't know what to respond when, when I say, oh, I'm just going to love you because you need it more than most. And they're like, mm. <laughs> okay. all right. So, what sort of questions do we have out there? Okay, so we have Eliza says some people think that if you worry about your loved ones, that is the definition of love. Many parents say the reason why I'm so nervous about you, I we don't trust you, is because I love you, and that I, I ideology really bothers me. I agree. I yeah. agree. He has he has kids. And God is definitely testing him on that one with his one. Yeah, really be careful about that. I mean, if anything that's coming from fear, you're you're creating the fear in your life and surrounding yourself by fear. Don't do that. All right, here's Linda Henderson. Hi, Linda. Welcome to the Wellness Show. Good morning. Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to report what I consider a. Uh, Kind of a miracle was the Court of Atonement that just happened a couple days ago. Wow. Okay. Um, there was a, uh, a family that um, that another family member of mine felt like this entire family, you know, didn't particularly like her and, you know, you know, that kind of thing. And she, they were nice to her and polite, but they weren't, like, they didn't embrace her. They didn't really show interest in her. They never asked her any questions about herself, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, this, my family member reported to me the other day that she, this is a part of the world where they're not like totally socially isolated. They are, people are gathering together in small groups. And they just, um, family told her that we're so glad to spend time with you and get to know you better. And it's been a real joy for us. And she just about fell off her chair. Wow. But I had done a court of atonement and my healing team was there and each member, there's about six members of this family and they each came up to her and turned and said, we didn't see you because we had the veil of judgment. We mm. didn't see you for who you were because we, we had this veil of judge, a judgment over our eyes or whatever. Yeah. And so then they, they saw her and then they went and each one embraced her in turn. I love that. Let me did say that again. See if I got right. We couldn't see you because, say it again, the veil of judgment. Yeah, we weren't seeing you. We weren't seeing you. We, because, we weren't seeing you because we our vision was clouded by the veil of judgment. Right. We couldn't see you because our vision was clouded by the veil of judgment. I love that. 
That's an amazing quote. Uh, yeah. We could put it into a positive. I can now see you because I let go of my veil of judgment. That's right. so beautiful. And then, that was in the Court of Atonement. And then in, you know, 3D or whatever, um, they actually express to her their openness to her, their, you know, their experience of joy and having her around, feeling like they were getting to know her better and that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, I, I was bolded over. I didn't, I didn't, you know, <laughs> I myself was like, I sort of forgotten, you know, that was something that I, I I'm going to try to see what happens. And I myself was bolded over. I, I was like, you know, that was the uh, validation of, you know, what was happening in the court of a toilet. Um, yeah. Anyway. Well, thank you, Amy Joe Ellis. We love you dearly, and um, thank you for showing up on planet Earth, and and thank you for those on the other side, Abraham, for touching her and teaching her this, and thank you, Amy Joe, for showing us that we can speak with angels, and angels can help solve many problems that are beyond our human ken because we don't have those abilities yet. So yeah, so. <laughs> I'm really excited about the idea of what I would call uh, a new planetary steward or eco-spiritual steward is one that knows how to work with angels and elementals. So uh, elementals yeah. can think, do things that humans can't do and angels can do things that humans can't do and vice versa. But when we have that new triune relationship, we will be able to heal the planet and each other. So that's what I'm excited about. So it's mm -hmm. great that you're working with angels and that you're getting miracles happening in your life. And what could be better than that? That sounds exciting to me. It is. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it, it was just the, the approximation of, so it was, you know, it was undeniable because I'd done the, you know, the Court of Atonement and then two days later, I get this message. Yeah. So there was no, you know, there, there was no, it was clearly connected. Right. It wasn't, you know, yeah. two separate, completely separate yeah. experiences. It was like clearly yeah. connected. So I was, I was folded over. I just thought that was. Crazy. I think that's great. We yeah. were, we were talking about faith on the show uh, previous about you know what about faith and I was saying, well, use the scientific you know uh, approach and inwardly, like test it out, and you tested it out, and there was proof positive that it worked. And now you right. don't, you don't have to have faith. You just know it works, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, try anything, right? Yeah. And the, the worst that can happen is not as little as they always say. The worst that can happen is nothing happens. So just try it anyway. And, yeah. um, so anyway. So yes, thank, thank you. you. So much. Yeah. yeah. Full card of atonement definitely works. Okay. Like All right. Bye for now. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Yes. Yeah, so um, if you don't know about the full card of atonement, uh, then just Google Amy Jo Ellis. And get our little booklet. Actually, I think there's one or two volumes now. Oh, here. I have up. one. I have one in color. You can see there it better. Amy, Enhancing Amy her life. Joe Ellis. She's yeah. on Facebook. And the she's it has been translated into many, many languages. And by the way, if you want to translate the deep clearing protocol. Hey, so, so we're getting one in Portuguese. Oh, we're getting one in Portuguese. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and this is this is the deep cleaning protocol and the deep cleaning protocol and the full court of atonement are very, um, work very much alike in the same way that you do, um, you do sayings and it clears, it clears it out and it brings in more light. The yeah. same, the same exact concept. Yeah, and, they're like two angels wings, one mm -hmm. on the left wing and one is the right wing, right? Yes. And if you're an angel and you want to learn how to fly as an angel, then you use the Court of Atonement as one wing and you use the deep clearing as the other and you become a sovereign human being. And, th and then you literally you become an earth angel. I mean, Charlie, who we were talking and we were on this show this morning, Charlie mm -hmm. is an earth angel. He is. Yeah. An Very earth common. angel is one that can speak their truth no matter what. Mm -hmm. As some of them have had a near death experience. So Charlie had a, a motorcycle accident uh, and who he was and who he is now is completely different. His brain was rewired. And some of us have to have that experience to bypass our you know, rational brain that is wanting to tell us all this information that usually isn't very helpful. So when you're in that clear consciousness of connected to source, 
your true nature like Charlie is, you become an earth angel, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, so now Eduardo, hmm? Eduardo says, theme of the day, how does one move from fear to heart love? If anxiety rears its head, it, I first go back to my breath to ground myself. How can we get out of our head? Please give more tools. Thanks. They, you know, I was told from a Buddhist monk that the longest or the, yeah, the longest journey is from your head to your heart in life, from your head to your heart. So make it easy on yourself and determine what the difference is. Like, are my thoughts telling me like what to do to, is it my is it my head telling me to live in fear or is it my heart telling me to live in in fear and how do you know like how do you know the difference tyson because i i just do now well because i have a, a pendulum right i mean if i'm going to do it at the le that level i mean i'm like you i just know yeah but until i know that i know that i know and i become mm -hmm. unshakable in my sovereign truth i would use a pendulum and i would say is this from my true nature which is connected to source, or is this from my human mind consciousness? I'd ask that question. Your brain is a human mind consciousness, and your well, yeah, yeah. Well, yes mind. and no. A human mind consciousness is mm -hmm. an ego who wants to live, wants to be in charge, right? It's like the, it's like the inner child that's never ever been calmed down, and the, and an inner child is so yeah. scared about what's going on in the world that it's in fear all the time because it's been raised to be fearful because this is a scary world yep. to be in and it believes all the things that it's been told like COVID-19 and lockdown and social distance or whatever the story is you know yes what a, yeah, uh, whatever matter. the story is we don't have to you know get into well, all how do you stories. how do you calm down your monkey mind I meditate I you just breathe in the moment right I mean we do the three breath all the time I mean you just mm -hmm. take three breaths it's impossible to be in your monkey mind if you take three breaths so we think so let's do it right now so okay let's do it so i want you to do just relax and uh, we we're going to take a deep breath and when you feel your lungs filling from your diaphragm up and all of your cavity or all of your lung capacity and then fill your heart as the last thing and we want you to imagine that you're bringing white light down through your crown chakra and you're filling your whole body with white light and then when it's totally full and there isn't even room for any more white light. I want you to give it all away because as you give, you receive. So you put your hands up and you give it to the world, right? So you're the one that brings on this divine energy and you give it all away. And we do three of those and we sigh on the exhale. Okay, so let's do first one. Uh, uh. Second one. Uh. Uh. Third one. Oh. oh, you go so much faster. I'll try to have a monkey mind <laughs> thought. Where's the monkey mind thought? I can't find one. It's gone. It's gone. Okay, now you say, I'm now connected to source. I am now connected to source. I'm now, I'm now connected, connected to, to source. source. Now connected to source. Okay, so now we have a whole full wall of light. But the thing with most empaths and sensitive, they're already full of light. Hey, I'm a light being. I'm like a balloon. I'm up in the clouds. I see unicorns and lollipops. And Don't say that. Rainbows. <laughs> Everything's okay. No, no. All I have to do is meditate. Ground, okay. ground. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to ground. Okay, so here we go. So these are the same breaths, but you're bringing them up. Like think of warm brown earth energy, like a warm blanket and you pull it right up to your chest. I don't know about you and it's cold outside and that nice warm blanket in bed, right? And yeah. it feels so good. So mm -hmm. bring that blanket up, you know, and pull the energy up from the center of the earth all the way up. Feel yourself with that warm, cuddly energy, all, all, of, all of you and into your heart and then sigh on the exhale and give all that energy to, the, to everybody on the planet, okay? First breath. Oh. Second breath. Oh. And we'll slow this one down. Thank you. Oh. 
So nice. Okay, now you say, I'm now grounded to earth. I am now grounded to earth. Now grounded to earth. I am now grounded to earth. Now grounded okay, so now here's the last one. See if you can do this. This is like, what is it like? Um, rubbing your head and your belly at the same time or chewing gum and rubbing your head, whatever. I can't even remember what it is. See, I get so confused. All right, trying to do two things at once. Okay, so I want you to bring the divine light energy down through the crown chakra, bring the warm brown energy up through your feet, mix them in your heart. Think of the yin yang symbol, you know, light into dark, dark into light, light into dark, dark into light. And when the soul, your heart's so full of all this energy, give it to the world okay so everybody got this one you're bringing the light energy in from the top the brown earth energy in from the bottom you're putting them in your heart and you're spinning it like a yin yang symbol right mm -hmm. you're so full of it whoops you're so full of nice energy <laughs> so full of it you have to give it away and you breathe it out into the world you give it out to the world okay yeah one more here it goes first one Oh, second one. Oh. And one more. Oh. And now you say, I am now Connected to heaven and grounded to earth. I'm now connected to heaven and grounded to earth. I'm now connected to heaven and grounded to earth. So now you're like a lightning rod. Grounded to earth. If the energy comes through your crown chakra and zaps you, it goes through your feet and you're grounded. Okay? It's like the lightning rod. And for those that know the Kabbalah, it's that, that lightning bolt that comes through the center or the yin and the yang or the the light in the dark, when you're in that middle space, that zero point, the energy flows through, right? Mm -hmm. And you learn what you need and you let go of what no longer serves you. You become the mm -hmm. conduit between heaven and earth. That's how you calm down, right? Well, that's the first part of, of being in your heart, going from your head to your heart. That's the last thing to do. It's a practice though. That's what I'm saying. It's a problem. And, that, and that's a good way to start is by breathing three deep, big deep breaths, connecting to Mother Earth and connecting to Source. And but it's it the end too. Earth. The end is when you forget to do that. Death is when you forgot how to breathe. So true. But I'm just, we're just asking, like Eduardo just asked, um, how do we how do we stay out of our fear and get into from our head to our yeah, well, we just told that's, you how to that's what we're answering right yeah. now. I'm just focusing, focus, yeah. Tyson, focus. Love you, Tyson. Focus. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, if you forgot how to breathe, you're dead. Yes. Yeah. So I it's agree. a good thing to know how to breathe. And I can tell you, when if you do have to breathe on your own, which is what happens with COVID 19, mm -hmm. is you have lung problems and it gets hard to breathe, they can get really, really scary. Because the more fearful you get, the more it all shuts down. So the thing to remember when you are in a stress situation is get out that paper bag and start breathing and regulate your breath or do this three breath technique yes, that calms you down so you don't be going into overwhelm because literally you will die from the fear. And that's, and that's what we're trying to explain to people is to please stay <clears throat> out of the fear by, by doing breath work. Because when you stay out of the fear, then you raise your vibration. And when you raise your vibration, we talked about this yesterday, when you raise your vibration away from that, which is that which is lower, like the coronavirus or ticks. I talked about ticks yesterday with my dog. Once you're above that, then it, then it can't attach to you, you see? So it's, it's real simple to follow and not complicated. We're not trying to complicate anything. We're trying to make it very simple for you to, to breathe, stay out of fear. And when you stay out of fear, it'll pass right by you, whatever it is that doesn't serve you. And the other thing you can do is have a green smoothie for breakfast. Or drink say, water. And you'd say, well, what does that have anything to do with it? Well, the green smoothie gives you all the nutrients and vitamins and trace minerals you need to bring up your stress, you know, to deal with your stress level, 
and mm -hmm. calm you down because your body is being fed with the nutrients it is to be healthy. Therefore, yeah. you can handle stress much easier. A, 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 a body that's acid, acidic, that's under stress, doesn't have the minerals and vitamins can lead to disorder and disease very, yeah. very quickly. So yeah. this is one way of doing it. So yeah. it's your food that you eat. The other yeah, thing be is mindful water. of what you put in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Laura had you know put a glass of water up there, you know. Mm -hmm. Your water bottle, 995 on the bottom. I don't know if you can see this without me spilling. 995 on the bottle to bless it, right? 995 on the pad. I have 995 all, 995 all over the house. I just put 995 energetically in the house. And 997. So the whole house vibrates that way. So I don't have to continue to put stuff on stuff or think about it. That's just my my laziness. <laughs> All right. So what? So so for those that want to do it differently, I have a pad here <laughs> on my desk that has a a, a paper generator, radionics generator that has nine nine five on it, and so it's on my desk. So everything goes on that as I'm sitting at my desk. So I have my coffee. Oh yeah, coffee. Oh, tell us how how um paper. What do you call it? Paper what? Radionics. Radionics. Tell us how. Oh, and here they want to know what is 995 and what is 997. And we also want to know what paper radionics are that that would um, push that that vibrational energy of 995 and 997 out. Well, if you if you have a, if you are a dowser um, and you understand about energy fields, and I make a big jump, and, and let's say you do know. And, the, and you got a you know a rod like this, and you come up and you measure somebody's energy field, and it, say it's there, and then you do nine nine five. You when you come back in to measure their energy field, there'll be a quantum jump in their field, okay? Just by sending them oh, larger. nine nine five. It's I'm larger, a larger yeah. field. Yeah, and you can. And do your this. field is your protective aura around you. No, it's just your field. Right, but it protects you. Well, when, when you when my field is is short i i bump into things but only on that side where it's short when i increase it out again i stop bumping into things that's just okay my... well and that's your field i mean i don't know if you've got a big plastic bubble maybe you're like one of those people you know where you climb inside of the bubble and then you run into each other and bounce so laura's <laughs> laura's got a bouncy ball energy field right everything bounces off her and yeah, and other people I'm have. I'm too aware. I apologize. Too no, aware. No, that's too okay. Aware. And other people have white energy fields. So I'm protecting myself. I have to boost up my white shield, right? So that's another energy field. And it, so it depends on how you want to do it, or you could just have an energy field, right? The point is, when you bless it, somebody by doing 995 or even a plant, their energy field expands exponentially. That's the whole point. And, she, and Laura's right, when you are in your body because you got grounded by the three breaths, your auric field does is like a bumper car. I mean, I'm teasing her, but it is like a bumper car. It means that anything that comes at you that isn't at the same frequency, it just bounces off you, right? Yeah. It just does can't penetrate because you're in your sovereign truth. You're connected to heaven and grounded to earth. Your mm -hmm. energy field has expanded. And now you're blessing everything that you're putting in your mouth. 995 water, 999 to the food, 995 to the universe around you. You're sending 995 to other people. So it's like your 995 is like a prayer or like, uh, you know, when you do, when you say grace. 995 is like saying grace. It's like gratitude, right? 997 is a lot of higher in vibrational frequency is like a giving a blessing so it's like you know mm -hmm. it's like in a church when we do this and we we bless something right or as in the mayans we do this and we open up the gateway so we're doing a blessing you know we're honoring the energy of the place right and we're doing a blessing so that's a 997 and, and, and anything that might, that might not be um good or um toxic to us will will be harmonized in that 995 so right. let's say somebody drops some arsenic in your water by accident you 995 it it will harmonize that and well, I, I would first filter the water <laughs> well that too <laughs> yeah. hey just filter your you water. know what i realized though 
our show about love and stepping out of the fear is about honoring people and and to for them to become sovereign human beings and to think for themselves whereas i believe what just came to me is that like television those news programs that are that are forcing people in to believe this these fearful things are actually trying trying to um, take away your sovereignty take away your ability to think for yourself and take away from from whatever it is that they that they think that that they need to do to control us in whatever way instead of because if you're, you're a sovereign human being and you think for yourself right you might be more uh, uh, less there you will be less able to be controlled absolutely i want, I want you all to think about that absolutely mm -hmm. and it's not so much about being controlled or not be controlled or who they're doing this to that and you know that's important for you to know no, but if you're a sovereign human being and you're in your heart it really doesn't matter i mean it doesn't become an issue anymore i mean people are doing what they're, and they're being crazy and they're doing silly things and people are believing certain things and, and there's no judgment i mean there's compassion and that you hope that they wake up and if they want to talk to you and ask you about what's going on or why you're not wearing a mask then you can talk to them about that but you're not trying to convince anybody of anything everybody's at the state in their own evolution of consciousness wherever they need to be or they wouldn't be there right so everybody's doing the best they can even those that are doing the lockdown or whatever craziness they think they're doing they're coming because they think that they, what they're doing is right it's right. when we think that we're doing something right and we haven't aligned with our true nature that we're in a human mind consciousness and we're operating on some belief system that most likely is erroneous okay the mm -hmm. only way that we could do something that's beneficial for you me and everything on the planet is if we come from our heart that's the only way we see receive guidance and that guidance is only good for me my guidance isn't good for laura it's only good for me so it's specific guidance that has to do with where you need to be and what you need to do for yourself. It's not for Tom and it's not for Dick and it's not for Harry, it's for you. Now there may be similarities. I'm sure Laura and I are always, not always, but usually on the same page because we get similar guidance. But mm -hmm. hers is specific to her needs and mine specific to my needs. This is the important mm -hmm. thing. It's not relying on what humanity is saying, politically or otherwise, or socially uh -huh. or culturally. And you're 20 years older than me, so realistic. You don't have to bring that up, Laura. Well, but you have more life experience than I do. Well, okay. Realistically, no. you have more. You have more of a um, of a line to look at and say, "Well, I understand where you are, Laura. I've been there, but this this is what I've experienced." And then I can then I can look at you and say, "Oh, I, I that rings true to me." If it doesn't ring true to me, I don't listen to it, but the majority of what you say rings true to me to be honest i don't i don't know as if i can actively think of anything that i don't agree with you on yeah and this is this is what you know if you're coming if you're part of this tribe the really the way that you you know as a kid you, i don't know about you but we used to have you know we used to have what do you call it kids club or, or it used to be our private club like our boys club or whatever oh sure yeah yeah uh, and yeah. you had to be in a certain way or you couldn't be in our club right yeah well, this club is an energetic club if what we're saying uh resonates with you mm -hmm. and you're in this club you, you know you've already mm -hmm. been accepted it's a foregone conclusion if what you're we're saying makes no sense to you whatsoever you're not in this mm -hmm. club but we encourage you to go find your tribe where you do resonate with because that's what you need to be learning at this particular time Okay, and if what we're saying uh, is true energetically for you to join the club, it doesn't matter what age group you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, this goes all the way back to millennials and that age group that are getting this so much faster yeah. than my group. I mean, I was the lone wolf when this happened. Like I couldn't talk to nobody about this. I was that crazy kid who talked about UFOs at school and got himself beaten up, right? You don't talk about those things, right? In the 50s, you know, like, are you nuts? Kid, we're gonna have to lock you up. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can talk about those things now because the energies has changed. So 
my passion is to make it easier for impasse when they show up in the next generation so they don't have to go through this craziness that I went through, that there's a welcoming committee that's saying, hey, there's another group of us out there that gets that you're weird and we're weird too and it's okay to be weird. You're not mm -hmm. here to fit in, you're here to change the planet. Let's help you take back your sovereignty and stand in your truth so you can get on to deliver your message to the world. That's sure. what we're here for. Exactly. Right. And that's when I was when I was in fourth or fifth grade, one of my um, classmates lost his grandfather and I went up and I said, oh, your grandfather says this. And he started bawling and he was like, he pushed me and he's like, I hate you. And he ran away and I was like, oh, I just gave you like your grandpa just told me to tell you that like everything's going to be OK and blah, blah, blah. I didn't realize at the time that. That it hurt him, you know, it was only like a day or two. But these are the kind of things that I just thought were normal that everyone could do. I was like, well, what do you mean? You can't, you see him, he's right here. <laughs> I was just, yeah. I know now being in my fifties that, um, yeah, we were, we were special. <laughs> well, I didn't learn some of this stuff until I was in my seventies. So there you are. Oh, you did. Oh yeah. I, yeah, that's true. I was born with this. I forgot. Yeah. See, even that, I just assume that you, that you've gone through the same well i'm still working i mean the biggest the biggest lie out there is uh, you, know, you have to work hard in order to succeed you have to go to university to get a good job you have to do a b c or d or you don't deserve to be fed by the establishment or by the status quo or whatever mm -hmm. if you want to be a member of this society there's certain societal things you need mm -hmm. to sign up you know like your bank statement and give your life away when you sign for your credit card and also you know and also when you take a bank loan right that you're going to pay the bank and the man for the rest of your life okay so i don't see any birds or animals out there with any credit cards and i don't see them having to worry about their next meal and i know in my heart of heart and although there's no evidence around me that this is true that when i'm in my heart and connected to source I will be taken care of. All my needs will be met. That's so counter to what we're being taught. That's the biggest lie on the planet. That's what That's I'm talking right. about. That's the addiction that I'm working on. So these addiction, these addictions that I've inherited through my lineage and my belief system and what I've been raised to believe are so inculcated that it's hard for me, even though I know better, I still run those programs, right? Right. So those Eliza. are the ones I'm working on. Eliza, I know I know I'm not seeing his name correctly, but he said a lot of people didn't like me in school because of all my psychic abilities. It, it's it's true, and other people out there that that have had um, similar stories will say they'll they'll have had horrific um, abuse as children because of well, their. Let's, let's change this statement then. I love. I'm psychic and I love you and there's nothing you can do. We'll make a t-shirt that I'm psychic and I love you and there's nothing, nothing that you can do. I love it. That's beautiful. See how we can we can just keep loving ourselves. Just That's right. It. Just love, love, love. Yeah. Listen, Susie Brighton wants to say hi, hi Tyson. Good morning. Good morning. I've not seen her before, so welcome to the show. Yeah. And of course, everyone that, that comes on every day, we so appreciate you guys. Thank you for asking the questions. Um, and don't um, forget, you can phone in right up there, right? Mm -hmm. Always, always. So we have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, that we're going to kind of bring it away from where we were before, but we're going to try and bring in the love. Stay out of fear and in love. Um, Michelle Montgomery has found out our governor Newsom is going to deduct 10% from state employees, doctors. You're going too fast. I can't understand you. I'm going too fast. That's what okay. Michelle Montgomery lives in California and she found out that her governor is going to deduct 10% from state employees. Can we do a clearing or something to stop this from happening? 10% of what? They're going to take deduct ten percent from state employees, doctors, nurses, etc. I don't know how that works because doctors and nurses are paid by hospitals, which is a a business. So 
I'm not exactly sure how that yeah, works. It doesn't even make that. sense right now. It if doesn't. you diagnose somebody with COVID-19, you receive X amount of dollars as a doctor and you put them on a respirator, you get even more money. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the incentives out there are to push the COVID-19 figures to the roof, but we're talking about politics. So and maybe, we, maybe she needs to figure out, uh, come up with some more information and then let us know. Um, and who is it? Oh, no, no. Wendy Raymond asks, I would really love to know about, know about the Daily Angels for, for the year that Tyson was talking about last week. She really she wants, wants to know, know about what? The, the angels, that the weekly angel, oh, right. the daily angels. Right. All right. So every, every day of the year has its own particular angel. So, I mean, everything that's alive has a spirit, has an energy to it, everything. So if you even have a project in a way, there's a divic energy in charge of that project. Like for example, my printer is created by human, but when it was created, there's a divic energy that's in that printer. That's why you need to respect your printer and why it doesn't work when you're angry with it, right? I know this sounds weird, but this is the way the world, your car has a divic. This is why we are so disrespectful to everything around us because we treat it as inanimate junk, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to put it in servitude. It's like we want the universe to serve our needs and wants with no respect for the fact that we've taken minerals out of the earth and we've done oil and plastics and we made this thing and bound up all this energy in there with crystals in it. And we wanted to do our bidding and we have no respect for it whatsoever. Wait, I'm on a tear here. What was the question? You, you were, were talking about the angels. Yeah. The so angels. everything has an energy about it and every day has an energy about it. In fact, my friend Glenn can actually geogra ge use geometry to give you the geometry of each day. Mm -hmm. Each day has a geometry to it. Each day has a Thank secret yeah. energy yeah. to it. Okay. So, so do you know the, the um, website to this daily? Page? Yeah, absolutely. I'll put it in the show notes. It's a Yahoo group and it has, uh, and it comes out, you just join it and there's one for the moon cycles as well. And oh. uh, okay. And then there's another one. His name is Anthony Flores, F-L-O-R-E-N, Forenza, Forenza, N-Z-A who does the moon cycle, which I really encourage you to do. You can download the free moon cycle, uh, you know, and he has a, this moon cycle and mm -hmm. this month is about X, Y, and Z. Then mm -hmm. you download the monthly planner and it says, okay, this is uh, the beginning of the cycle. You, this is when you make an intention, plant your seed. This is when you harvest it at the full moon. This is when you have gratitude for what you receive. This is when you plant it again. So the whole cycle of manifestation is according to the moon. So knowing that and working with that is like the it's like planting your crop, right? It's like doing it according to the moon cycles, like this whole right. book well, here is back, about that, right? It's, let's get back to the angels though. No, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We you want your crop or your or anything to work. You do it in the same se sequence of what is the day energy. What's the energy of the day? Okay, you're playing with your dog. Did you get that? Oh, they both they both just came up to me with with toys. That's right. And with like, come on, mom, let's play. Enough of you on that computer thing. Let's well, we're play. nearly done, and we were just about close to the top of the hour. So the angel for each day has a certain message for you to understand and a blessing that for you to integrate into your life. And each angel has a name and each letter in the name has a vibration. And each, vib each letter has a color associated with it as well. So you have like two pages of information that is mind boggling just to spend one with one angel uh, for the day. So I can't spend a lot of time with it. I do spend some time with it, but I think I'd be, <laughs> the amount of information I would have if I actually understood it all would be really, really amazing. And behind it all is a book by um, a really, really gifted being 
that I gave to my friend Glenn to read, and he said, this is beyond me, and nothing's beyond Glenn, right? This is, the books are really, really amazing. They have to do with angelic energies, and, and anyway, so it's a good introduction to that whole body of information. I'll put the links there. You can take a look at it and ask me questions about it as we, you know, uh, anytime on the show. It's a great body of information. Very, very helpful. All right, the whole show has gone to the dogs. What can I say? The whole show has gone to the dogs, right? All right. Yeah, they, they love the energy today. There's so much love here. And they love here. Money. Oh, and I think everyone wants to go to the DP and, and, and run around. Oh, and by the way, uh, nobody signed up for, nobody wants to know about uh, viruses or clearing viruses and uh, okay. and colds and flus and things like that. So we're, that's postponed. I'll okay. still make it available if, if people want to sign up. So I'm still going to put up there. I'll put a different date on it. So if you would like to know a clearing for viruses and for flus, uh, please let me know and you can sign up and we will put that class forward. Uh, if you have a, well, what, what class do you guys want? Yeah, exactly. You can put your, you can uh, come forward uh, with whatever topics you want. Obviously, what I thought was relevant isn't relevant to anybody else. So that's okay. Right. Uh, okay, so my book is uh, in the process of being written. It's about the deep clearing protocol. So if you've had an amazing experience with the deep protocol and you want to be in the book, your testimonial, there's room for maybe 20, 30 testimonials. And if you, like Laura, are part of the Master Dowsing and Energy Healing uh, class, certification class, you'll get come into the book as a certified practitioner. But back. If you're like Laura and you don't do your homework, you're not going to be in the book, right? <laughs> so you, you need to get on with it. Anyway, we're at the top of the hour and Laura's already left us. So we'll see you Monday morning, same time, same place. Join us with your questions about dowsing and energy healing. Let us know what's up in your life and what's up on planet Earth that you'd like to know about. And so next Monday, be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Bye for now. We're saying goodbye. Okay. We're saying goodbye. Okay. Bye. For quality online wellness products, courses, and services, visit our sponsors, thewellnessstore.ca and the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy located at thewellnessacademy.ca. To stay in touch, visit us at thewellnessshow.ca. And until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.